But how many of you know, like Isaiah, and this is actually, I'm going to get into my message now, because it's going to concern uh, somewhat about missions this morning. But how many of you know the gospel of the kingdom needs to be preached all over the world? The gospel of the kingdom needs to be preached around the world. There's multiplied millions of people on this planet right now that's never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they need to hear the gospel. They need to hear the good news. There's people that are going to die and go to hell if they don't receive Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. I mean, no sugarcoating it, you know. They're going to go to the bad place. That bad place is called hell. Okay? And if we don't preach the gospel, we don't share that gospel with them, they will not make it to heaven. Plain and simple. So it's good for us to send missionaries. You know, that's why uh, we need to invest in those. As, as I say, Isaiah even said, just because he can't go right this minute, he's planning on going, but while he's here waiting to go, he's preparing to go, and he's sending resources that he has to help them in the process. Just because you can't do something doesn't mean you can't support something. Uh, that's why we need to invest in those that are willing to go because sometimes we're not willing or we can't. Sometimes that we, just, we cannot go. Sometimes we're just not willing to go, <laughs> right? So we need to invest into those that are willing and those that can take the journey. So we support them by doing that. And that's why we dedicated our, the fourth Sunday every month to take up a mission offering. We want to make sure we support our, our mission field. You know, we support the mission field on three fronts. Three fronts we support the mission field. One is locally. One is nationally, and one is internationally, right? So locally, we support here our, our community, those that come. I mean, people come to the church all the time, and, and as a, um, um, we consider it part of our missions, a part of our missionary action is those that come in and they need support. We, we help people do certain things around here to pay their rent, pay their bills, pay this, pay that. It's, it's part of our missionary outreach to our community, so support them and give them the needs that they have. And then there's the national... You know, we, we send our, uh, our tithe from the Church of God. We send tithe to the state office every month and to the, inter to the international office every month. And part of that tithe from our church goes to missions. And that's where internationally we support internationally Jesse and Eli. That's an international mission. Isaiah going to Greece, that's an international mission. The things that we do around here are local or national. The things we do in the borders of our own country are national. You get outside of our borders, there's international ministry. And we support all three, and we never want to miss the opportunity to reach those that are outside of us. I can't, I can't say that enough, because no, I'm, I'm fixing to transition, and some of you think I might have changed my mind. And I haven't. Sometimes we say, well, you know, it's either this or that. No, it can be this and that. Sometimes it's not a this or that issue, it's a this and that issue. Somebody say this and that. <laughs> say and. and. Say this. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. Say this and that. Yeah. Okay, I want you to make sure you get this. This is this and that. This isn't a this or. Too many times, we are, us humans, are, we are finicky people sometimes. It's just one extreme to the other, isn't it, dear? Yes, amen. <laughs> Oh, this is funny. She, she asked me a question the other day about something. Well, would you rather have this or that? And I'm like, holy smokes, that went off the rails on the, having this. Like, Can we get some middle ground? I mean, does it have to be that extreme, this or this or that? Like, how about this and that? And I, I've, shared that, I've shared that a lot over the years. I believe this and that is important. We don't want to miss the opportunity to reach those outside of us. That being said, we also don't want to miss the forest for the trees. So I'm going to go somewhere over this this morning so y'all hold on. So, you know, we, we will go out of our churches and minister to people who never ask us to come minister to them. Let me say that again. Many times people will leave their church and go outside of their church and minister to people that never ask them to come. And we're okay with that. We're okay with going out there. We try to be generous, take food and supplies, love and support to complete strangers who never ask us to come help them. We do it every year here for Thanksgiving. We make Thanksgiving boxes. And we've carried it door to door, knocking on the door. Here, you on Thanksgiving box. Now, let me tell you how appreciative they are to receive it, but they never ask for it. And we're willing to go out, and we're willing to support, and we're willing to go at all cost and show up. Because a lot of times they don't know they need it, but they really do. But we've, we have endeavored to go, and nobody called and said, hey, come. Now, see, I haven't changed my mind about missions is still important and we still need to go. But a lot of times, even on the mission field, we're going out there and ministering to a lot of people that never ask us to come there to begin with. Okay, now I have a point that I'm trying to make with this. So don't, don't get me. Like, everybody's still okay. Say this and that. <laughs> okay. While this is a good thing, I don't believe we can ever overlook the one sitting right in front of us on a Sunday morning. 
or a Tuesday night or even now a Friday night. You know, we, we, we are, I'll tell you what, we are kicking against the enemy in this time and season. Every other church is closing and we're adding more. Everybody, close, close, you can't have anybody come to church. And we have Friday, we have Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday now. Lord have mercy. We be, <laughs> how, how, many, how many of you had fun Friday night? How many of you had fun Friday night? Friday night was fun. I enjoyed it. Thank you guys for being here. We've got uh, 13 more weeks of the Friday night service on the love and respect. And after that, we might do something else. Who knows? But let's start this morning by reading Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. Let's go to there in, our, in, in Scripture. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. You can never miss the forest for the trees. We've heard that all of our lives. Well, what does that mean? That means you can't look beyond what's in front of you if what's in front of you is actually what you're looking for. Right? Sometimes what you're looking for is sitting right in front of you and you're looking past it. But Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. See, this, is, this passage of Scripture right here is one of the reasons that I, I will fight to, to the end to keep these doors open. I will fight with everything in me to make sure we have a place to gather together as the Bible told us to do. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. There's some countries where you can't do that and they will kill you if you do. Now if they come through our doors today and said, look, we're going to kill every one of you if you don't get out of here. I don't know what I would say. I'd probably say, see you guys later. I love you and I love Jesus, but I want to keep doing it on this side of heaven. Who knows? I know so many people that talk big until the time comes. You know, we, I'm a <laughs> big man of faith and power, Holy Ghost Jr. Ooh. I didn't know you was going to do that. Hold on. You know, that's, that's the whole thing about church. It's really got me upset even through this whole COVID thing. All these churches out there in America tell you how big God is until COVID came on the scene. Everybody tell you how you need to come to church and how you need to serve God. And God's the most powerful being on the planet. And God can do anything. God can deliver. God can set free. Oh, nobody said COVID was coming. And I'm not, I've said this many times. I'm not a denier. It's not, it's not about denying COVID. It's about magnifying God. I don't, I'm not denying anything, but I'm magnifying God and saying God's still bigger. He's still God. Nothing's changed. Come on. He's still bigger. All right, so I'm not here this morning to teach you something new in case you didn't know. I'm just here to remind you of what you already know. I know I get in some really deep revelations sometimes that make your head spin. Well, not really, but I mean... <laughs> I, preach, I preach a lot of new things, but this morning I'm not here to tell you anything new. I'm here to try to remind you of something you already know. I'm trying to here to strengthen what you already know. The, there's a place in the Bible where it even tells you strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains. Don't let go of where you're at. Hold on, hold on. So I've always thought that gathering together in a church setting is of the utmost importance. I've always thought that. And you, but, but why would I think that? Just so we can come to church? Just so we can say we came to church? Just so God won't be mad at us? Or so we can appease our conscience that we made it to church on Sunday morning? You know, a lot of folks go to church that way. That's why so many churches are, they have so many set programs. Let's don't get too involved in church. Let's just go through the motions every Sunday and we can light this candle, light that candle, take this and leave and everybody's fine. You served your purpose of getting up and going to church on Sunday morning. You didn't serve anybody else. You didn't serve God. You just served a purpose. It was so structured, you had nothing to do with the service at all except show up, watch the movie, and go home. Hmm. I don't want to do that. That's one of the reasons we pray and we worship and we do the things we do. I want you to get involved. This is not a spectator sport. This is participatory all day long. If you don't get involved, that's your fault. Shame on you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Some, uh, some, some folks are so liturgical in their settings of their churches that the people don't, ha they don't even have to show an emotion or change or do anything when they walk through the doors. Don't expect God to show up because if God does, he might expect you to change. And we don't want you to change. We just want you to keep showing up on Sunday morning, do your service, and go home. Hmm. But see, the Bible tells us that not, 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 is it coming together is not all that verse tells us to do. We're told to provoke one another to love and to good works. Is also what that passage said. Provoke one another to love and good works. The problem is we're provoking people the wrong way. 
It didn't say provoke them to irritation, agitation, and anger. It said provoke them to love and good works. How do you provoke someone to love and good works? First thing you got to do is show up. And then spend time with one another. You know, Lord Jesus, let me move on. We're told to exhort one another in that passage. It said, provoke one another, exhort one another. Just showing up here on Sunday morning is not all that is compared that we're told to do when it says come together. Just showing up is not the coming together. Whenever you provoke someone to love and good works, when you exhort someone, when you spend time with one another, now you're actually doing the fulfillment of the passage. It's not just walk through the door, sit down, listen to me preach a little bit, get up and leave, and woo, I went to church. Come on, somebody. I know it's a good. I know it's it's a good thing to do some Sundays. You know, it depends on what's going on at home. Somebody, somebody might have your roast cooking or something. I don't know. I remember years ago. I've been to some churches where the pastor had to quit at a certain time, where people start rattling their keys. <laughs> we we got things to, we we got things to do at home, pastor. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Do you think that person fulfilled this passage? They provoked somebody, all right. It provoked me if you'd done that to me. I'd be provoked, all right. But it wouldn't be the good works. And it wouldn't be the love. <laughs> I'd be provoked. The, so just showing up here on Sunday morning is not all there is to fulfilling that gather together command. I promise you. While you're here, you're supposed to provoke someone. You're supposed to exhort someone. You notice in the cafe, we had to rearrange the tables out there because we were getting so many people coming in and wanting to stay and have cafe, we needed more chairs out there. Do I like the round chairs better? Absolutely. Do I like the way this looks? Absolutely. I think that looks good out there. We added 20 chairs to the cafe area. Woohoo! So, as I said, we're kind of bucking the trend. Cut your, cut your attendance down. We're like, okay, let's add chairs. We heard what they said. The, the state said so only so many can show up in the room. We say, get some more chairs, y'all. Like, I don't know. So y'all better pray for me. I talked. We had a. I'm, I'm part of the state council of our denomination. Some of you knew that. Some of you didn't. I'm. A, I'm a big wig in this state for the Church of God. In case you didn't know. I'm woohoo. I'm on the state council. Hallelujah. And uh, we had our meeting this past week, and um, I talked to the bishop a week or so ago. We were talking about having the meeting, and that's what I shared with him. I said, I know I haven't communicated with you a whole lot since this whole pandemic thing started. I said, because I didn't want to talk to you. <laughs> and he's like, what? I said, well, I didn't want to tell you what we're doing. I'm not trying to put a bullseye on us out there, but we're not abiding by what everybody else has told us to abide by. Amen. I said, and I've seen no reason to try to explain that to you. We're, <laughs> we're going to do what we do. Praise God. I said, down in the cities, you guys do what you have to do. I said, but I think as a leader, my job, mine and Michelle's job is to lead people in the direction of somewhat they want to be led. Amen. And this church wants to have church. Amen. I said, so guess what we're doing? We're having church, and I ain't telling you about it. Amen. I said, so. I said, but, but he sees, uh, we have to do a church report every month, and he sees it, and he's like, Lord, have mercy. You guys seem to be doing pretty good up there. I'm like, that's right. Leave us alone. <laughs> I can't put this video. I can't put this video on the internet now because then the bishop be watching it and he'd be like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> no, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Don't get me wrong. You know, anytime we have a conflict with someone, we always want to determine whether they're great people or not. They're great people. They just might have difference of opinion sometimes. Yeah. But we have his total support. But we also we we have his guidance, and he wants us to be cautious. That's all from the state. Okay. So I believe that we are adhering personally. We had it. We're adding chairs. We're growing. Look around. I believe we're adhering to what that passage tells us to do here at Open Arms Church. We're not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. We're not. And we're, we're hanging out in the cafe. The one thing that they certainly told us not to do, please don't serve food at any of your churches. Right. <laughs> and we're like, we need more bakers. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys are really paying attention, aren't you? We've been praying. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's why I, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl works in our office every week. She's in there. She's taking care of things every week. And one of the things she asked me every Monday, she said, okay, we're going to pray this week because they have a group of folks that pray. I said, she says, what, what's, on your, uh, what's on the agenda for praying this week? I said, one of the same things as always, pray for protection over our church. Amen. Pray for the Lord to continue to protect us as we meet and gather together and do what he's called us to do. Amen. It's always on the top of my list. I'm praying for your protection. That, that we can come and do what we do and be protected by the anointing of God in this place. Come on, somebody. 
All right, so, so we're gathered together, spending time as, as a body of Christ, exhorting and encouraging one another. I believe we're doing that. So we never forget the people in this room. Never forget this. Never forget the people in this room need your ministry just as those outside this church does. Never forget that. There's, there's still a bombardment of a pandemic, a transition of an election, in case you guys didn't know, shutdowns, lockdowns, and a country that seemingly lost its mind. That's still going on outside of these four walls, right? <laughs> the, the, and, and, the, and that one of that, uh, in that passage, it says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, right? And it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, some folks say, well, what day is it? Does any of you besides me see that day approaching? That day it's talking about is the return of Jesus. And it, to me, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but can anybody see what have, has, has transpired over the last 15, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, the direction our country is going? Some of you right now should be standing and just looking east. <laughs> he said he's coming, Lord Jesus. What I, he should be here any minute now. I mean, from what I'm seeing in the world today, I mean, look, I, I look I'm, I'm not looking for signs anymore. I'm listening for a horn. <laughs> you know, some people are still looking for signs. I'm like, oh, signs are there here. Give me a horn. <laughs> and we're like, the end is coming. So, so I, I don't know about you, but I see that. So that's why we need to continue to follow Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. It said, really do these things as you see the day approaching, the day of the return of Jesus Christ. This is when you need to really get, get busy about this, this, this passage of Scripture. Gather together. Love one another. Provoke one another to love. Exhort one another. Spend time encouraging one another. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff going on out there. And I thought about this this morning. That's why that part of that song, really, it encouraged me. I need safety. I need a safe place. I need refuge. While the world's going crazy and bombarding you, turn on your television and just watch five minutes of the news. Lord, have mercy. She said, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, Wilbur. Like, my God, we need a safe place. We need a place of refuge, but your spirit needs to run into the cleft of the rock of Jesus Christ and say, I need refuge. I need protection. That's where the prayer and the worship and the coming to church, we need to separate ourselves from the world and get in here with a body of believers that can protect us and, and, and gird around us and, and keep us strengthened and encouraged in the Lord. Amen. This is no time to give up. Amen. Come on, somebody. We're, the finish line, we can see the finish line. Cause somebody says, is this the end of the world? No, but I can see it from here. I see, I see some signs and it keeps saying, there it is, I think I see it. There's no time to stop now. There's no time to give up now. And if you see anybody that is, it's time to encourage them. Say, no, 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 not now, not now. Don't give up now. It's kind of like, you know, you're trying to have somebody open a jar for you sometime. Can you open this for me? And they go pop and say, I almost had it. I got it all loose and I'm ready for you. You just finished it off. Don't let somebody finish your race for you. <laughs> so I personally believe, this, I'm going to say this is a this and that. I believe we should be exhorting and encouraging each other, especially for those that show up in here in this church on Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday. As I said, I believe we'll go out there to the world and minister to people that didn't even ask for it. I believe you show up in this church, you're asking for it. <laughs> I, I believe you show up here, you're just asking for it. Uh -uh, you're gonna get, and you're going to get it too. I know there's some people that's come in and they've sat and they've listened and they've left saying, no, that's not for me. Well, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Did you know there, there's, I don't know, there's, at one point there was three churches in Graston. My, I might... This church, I might, Michelle might, you might not be for everybody, but there's somebody out there they can go to. I'm not Jesus, you're not Jesus. Don't feel bad because we're not for everybody. Somebody is, go to them. Don't blame me if you don't have a relationship with God. But I assume if you show up out here, you're asking for it. You walk through those doors, sit down in this chair. <laughs> you, look, you came to me. I didn't come to you, you came to me. You're to get it. Right? 
And some of you, that's why some of you want to invite your friends. You're like, oh, 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 Jesus. I don't know if my friends can put up with that. But that's also why some of you do invite your friends. You're like, you need to come out here. This, We have a family like no other. We have such a diverse, loving group of people. We have such a diverse, faith-filled, on-fire-for-God group of people that people need to be here and experience you because we are fulfilling Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. We're doing what the Word of God said. God can ask nothing more of you than to do what His Word says. Some of you are getting extra biblical and think He's asking something of you He didn't. <laughs> Don't get extra biblical on God. Okay, Stay within the confines of the Word. And this is one of the things we know we can do. We can show up for church on Sunday morning and we can encourage one another. We can spend time fellowshipping. We can spend time loving, hugging on each other. Unless you don't want to be loved and hugged on, put your sticker on. Says, I'm social distancing. We've got them out there on the... No, really, we've got stickers out there on the, the guest services booth that says that. Pardon me, but I'm social distancing. Shut up and get away. No, don't say all that. But <laughs> it, don't, it don't say all that, but you can ride on there if you want to. Get away from me. Whatever you want to ride on there. So I believe they come out here, jump on them. They're asking for it. Show them, and exhort them, encourage them, admonish them. Right? <laughs> and this is what I think we should do when you're encouraging and admonishing. Tell them Jesus hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. Jesus isn't confused. God isn't confused. We see all this stuff going on out there in the world, and we're like, oh, my God, what's happening? I'm going to talk about this again a little bit next week. You know, there's... There's a lot of people that want somebody to come on the scene and tell us what's going on. They want somebody to come on the scene and, and, and straighten all this out and somebody to do this and somebody to do that. Well, I can tell you, somebody did come on the scene 2,000 years ago and tell us all about this. Come on, somebody. There's, there's people still waiting on somebody, and he came 2,000 years ago and told us everything we were going to experience. And we, got, we even, even left a book. <laughs> they left a book. And if we follow the book, there's no guesswork of what's happening out there. Amen. Right? Hmm, come on, somebody. This didn't change just because everybody else did. Just because everybody else has an opinion, everybody else has a thought, everybody else has gone crazy, everybody else hadn't done what we thought was going to happen. I know there's a lot of things going on right now in our country. You're like, Lord, I never thought that would happen. Well, guess what? It did, it has, and it will. What's that, what's that old saying? The more things change more they remain the same and the thing about times like these there's always been times like these you know we're, we're still the, the most blessed nation on the earth we're still waking up in the morning living our life to the fullest and enjoying life as we, the best we can we're still the best place on the planet nothing's changed mm, come on somebody so God has not changed his mind See, the same God that delivered you yesterday will deliver you today the same God that sent salvation to save you yesterday will send and preserve and save you today. He's the same God. Nothing's changed. So that's what I want to share with you this morning. I'm about to close already. How about that? I'm not trying to come up with something new this morning. I'm trying to remind you you're still serving the same God. He's the same God. Nothing's changed. Our, our, our duty, though, is just to do what He says. And He says, gather together and exhort one another. Provoke one another to love. Tell each other that I'm still in charge. Encourage one another. Strengthen one another. Tell them it's okay. God has still got your back. <laughs> the same God that sent Jesus to save you is the same God that will preserve you today. He's the same God. Nothing has changed with God. And when we come through those doors, everybody in here should feel like they're entering into a place of protection and safety. This is a refuge. That's what I started back in February and March when I heard people telling us that we, well, you shouldn't have church. I'm like, the church has, has bragged for years upon years. The church is a lighthouse. The church is a refuge. The church is a hospital for sinners. It, oh, COVID, no, close the doors. Turn the lights out. We're not a lighthouse anymore. We're not a refuge anymore because you might get close to one another. Now the church has to shut down because we can't be what we bragged we were for thousands of years. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Be the church. Don't just come to church. Be the church. If we've bragged and we've told everybody how big God is, how good God is, we have a church and we can do this, we can do that. And then I was like, no. We, nobody told us COVID was coming. We, if we would, we wouldn't have said anything. We would have kept our mouths shut because you didn't tell us 
hard times were coming to the to America. <laughs> you didn't tell me hard times were coming to Minnesota. Lord, you didn't tell me hard times were going to come. And I'm thinking, you didn't read your Bible. Because <laughs> he did. He said, in the last days, perilous times will come. Don't look so shocked. You know, act like you're surprised. Don't look so shocked. Don't be sidetracked by what the world is doing because God has warned us of it. Amen. But he also told you, get in here and make sure everybody stays strong in the Lord. Amen. Encourage one another. Spend time with one another. So I exhort you this morning to never give up, never give in. Pick up your cross and keep walking towards the kingdom of God this morning. Amen. Come on, somebody. You don't give up. You don't give in. You pick up that cross and say, Though all hell assails me, <laughs> I will continue to carry my cross towards the kingdom of God. Amen. Plain and simple. Let's don't forget. That's what I'm, I'm not trying to teach you something this morning. I'm trying to remind you to do what we already know to do. Don't let the world deceive us and trick us into something new. There's nothing new. Hmm, hallelujah. Colossians 3.16. I told uh, Chris I was going to make it easy on him back there this morning with the computer. I'm only giving two scriptures. Look, and he's so quick. Good job, Chris. <laughs> Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let the word of Christ dwell in you how? Richly. It didn't say barely. It didn't say almost. It didn't just say a little bit on the surface, a little dabble, do you? Brill cream, you know, that stuff I use for you. A little dab. He said, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. We can do that for one another, can't we? Amen. Before you leave here this morning, admonish someone not to give up in the Lord. Before you leave here this morning, exhort someone to keep pressing on and moving forward. And I know that admonishing even can mean warn. Yeah, warn them that they're too close now. Don't give up. It's even a warning for you. Don't give up now. God hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. Strengthen them in the faith and the hope of their calling this morning before they leave. Come on, somebody. I think one of the greatest things you might do this week is just to tell somebody to hang in and not quit. Let me tell you. I think one of the, one of the greatest things you could probably do this week, sometime, some way, you find someone, you tell them don't quit. You tell them hang in there. God's still got this. God hadn't changed. The world might be going to hell in a handbasket. The world could be going, well, we know it is. The world's going crazy. Hey, woman, you somebody? I mean, amen. I mean, amen, somebody? And some of you have no clue what that means, but it, we've, got pe we've got people in our, in, our, in our house in the United States of America closing prayers, and they want to be, be conscious of both genders, so they said amen and a woman. Like, what has amen got to do with a woman? That's, that's so crazy. And, I, and one of my friends on Facebook said, well, I found a moron. <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, I believe you did. I believe you did find, you know. Cause, but this is how far we're going in our country. This is crazy talk. You're going completely against biblical principles that God created him male and female. Don't be trying to give me those gender nonsense. Oh, Lord, I better close. I'm going to get off on a whole other message. <laughs> one of the, what, I, believe, I believe one of the greatest things you can do this week is to tell somebody to hang in there and not quit. Encourage them in the name of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the love of the Lord, the faith of the Lord. Share your faith with somebody this morning, here in this room even. If you see somebody sitting out there, you see somebody around here. Usually it happens in here, though. Usually we, we spend, that's why that cafe, while we had dad chairs, you guys just won't shut up. You hang around all day talking to each other. Blah, 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 blah. And from, and from my vantage point, it's one of the greatest things I'll ever see in here. That's why I stopped preaching at 11.30. So that's what God told me years ago. Stop preaching at 11.30. Don't go past 11.30 if you can help it. And I'm like, why? He said, give them time to fellowship. Give them time to fellowship. And I'm like, yeah, but they need to hear me preach. Because 
Because I've always thought God's up there taking notes when I preach too. Right? He's like, Ooh, that's good stuff, Pastor Gene. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons that we have the team ministry too, though. You know, you guys know that you know we're Pentecostal, we're charismatic people, and a lot of Church of God, they have an altar call every Sunday morning. We don't. I don't have an altar call every morning to lay hands on folks. We do sometimes. I'll call, hey, anybody need prayer? I'll pray for you this morning. But we have team ministry available at the close of every service. Why? So that we can all function in our gifts. The healing team, the prayer agreement team, the prophetic deliverance team, they can function in their gifts, and nobody has to leave here without being ministered to every Sunday morning. So that we can encourage, we can exhort, we can pray for everyone. And make sure everybody has that time of ministry that if you need something, don't leave here in need of ministry, in need of fellowship, in need of prayer. Come on, somebody. It's, it, this is our responsibility as a church to do ministry, to pray for one another, to encourage one another. And we as a church and a ministry, I believe, are here to pray and encourage uh, much more as we see the day approaching. Much more as we see the day approaching. Amen, somebody. Amen. And I want to thank all of you for fulfilling that command today. You're here. Right? You're here. So apparently Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 is... You can check that off the list this morning. Ha <laughs> ha. I've done that one. God said do it. I'm going to do it. Now finish the verse. Exhort somebody this morning. Love on somebody. Spend some time with somebody this morning. It's people in this room need your ministry just as much as anybody outside this, this room. Amen, somebody? Well, if you guys stand to your feet. I'm